welcome back to the Content Complete Podcast, featuring myself, Spencer, and my co-host, Matt, with Neanderthal Gaming TV, and hailing from a faraway land next door, watch out, Fistcake, how's it going? Well, but I'm, what, I thought I was far away, now I'm no. here, what the fuck, oh, oh. god, it you're switching exactly. it up on me, yep. you son it's of a It's a thriller bitch. now. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Oh uh, god. So we're going to start with what games we play this week, uh, Fistcake, why don't you start us off? Video games. Well, I played a few. Um, Tuesday we played um, uh, a, a, a Mutant Year Zero. Yeah. We found the difficulty. We found it finally. Yes. It only took it only took the second episode, so that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we got we're like getting twice there. in a row, and then we decided let's go to a different area, and then we we survived by the skin of our. Really, t- it was my skin. tactical genius that brought us through. I mean, you had a lot of good, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to like, you know, say that you, you, you definitely weren't, you know, important. Right. But like, it was a group effort. All right. Yeah, well, it was, I mean, I mean, I had my character, you had your character. We all had right. our characters. Yeah, we all had it's our fine. Character and we we participated. I mean, we definitely listened to a lot of things you said, but like it was our own decisions still. Yeah. It's a nice trite. <laughs> JK. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, we got a new character, Selma. Um, Hayek. She, Selma Hayek from uh, Modern Movies. Family and yeah. stuff. Um, so, you know, it's pretty cool to have her on the video game scene. Um, yeah, I think the next the next episode, we're actually going to try to uh, go through the path that we couldn't go through before. Mm-hmm. Which will be very interesting because that has like whole new enemy types we haven't seen before. Shaman, shamans, shamans. Um, that wreck does. Yes. Yeah, because like the first thing they can do is like ah, I'm shouting to summon more people. Oh, great! Now there's four other more people here. Fantastic! What a which like great immediately day feels life. like this is too many. This is yeah. too many people. This is not well. Good. It's three versus like seven or eight there was a yeah. lot of them yeah like yeah. at first you get there and it's like three versus like four or five and then the guy's like hey we're getting attacked and like okay send in the friggin cavalry yeah. um, send in everybody I, mean, I think if we approach it from a different uh uh what's the word angle, angle. yeah i think we'll be fine um yeah, yeah. just narrow it down but we also upgrade yeah. some stuff and have some new things so yeah Forgot about that. We went shopping at yeah, the end. You have wings um, now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had wings oh, yeah. before, but like their arms. Yeah, they were arms. They're, they're arms. So now I have wings. It's but weird because like, I'm a duck. Are they moth wings or some shit? It's yep. Like some weird. Yeah. No, they're like bat like, wings. Well, I thought they they're were called moth wings. wings. Yeah. No, they look like bat wings. Well, we haven't seen the wings in action yet. Uh, well, you, can... you see the moth wing. They they look like bats because moth wings are tiny because they're on the moth. But if they were bigger, they would look like bat wings. All right. I have no idea. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I a zookeeper completely. <laughs> no questions asked. Great. So we did that. Then my game of this week was Monster Hunter World, which that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing that. I uh, Before I played on the PS4, I did like the Gunlance and the uh, charge, blade. charge Blade. Yeah. And those were fun. I like the Charge Blade a little bit more. It just takes like a little bit more stuff to do but the insect life whoo that's a lot of fun it's like uh flying around uh trying to bounce on monsters all the time trying to get your uh buffs together at every single opportunity you can Mm -hmm. and then you know it's just fun playing through the story mode through that but like once you play through it once you really don't want to do it again it's like yeah i get i have to kill monsters i understand this i don't care just (laughs) let me get on top of the giant just let me get on top of the giant volcano monster so he can go die in the ocean or whatever. I don't get spoilers for the Monster Hunter World story if anybody ever gave a shit about the Monster Hunter <laughs> that's World like story. like seven hours. Yeah. And that's like even like the actual like end game. Like it's like that's like the first half of the game. The second half comes after that, which is high rank stuff. And that's like when really stuff actually starts to matter because right. you, you find new monsters and they're all higher level. And they've added like two or three more monsters since the last time we all played on the PS4. You got the Devil Show and the TO something or rather, like a giant golden monster, a giant 
angry dinosaur that has like a pickle face and mm. Mm. a dragon that shoots tornadoes, I think. Pickle from- oh, fuck it. Really? I was like, man, hold yourself back. <laughs> I looked I'm over like, oh no, he's going to make a pickle uh, joke. In the pickle call- Rickosaurus is actually sick and it also kind of sounds like a disease. Yeah. It is a disease. It's called Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Alienated everybody. We have no more viewers at all. Good. Um, so, I so, like I played, <laughs> so I played that. Uh, and this next week, we'll be playing Warframe, which kind of reminds me of Monster Hunter World. It's just the, it's an, another grind fest, but it's a little bit slower and more sci fi. Right. I'm doing a bunch of research on that first. There's a surprisingly a lot of bullshit that they don't explain in that game, which I've heard like a lot about because like Total Biscuit was a huge fan of it. Yeah. And yeah. then. He said the exact same thing. I'm like, oh, it can't be that bad. The player is like, fuck, what? What is? What's an end? Wait. So in order to make my my mod better, I have to, you know, uh, fuse into it, and then in order to fuse into that, I have to have endo and currency. But to get endo, I have to usually uh, transform my other cards into melt those into endo, and then what the fuck? Wh- where does it end? But, where is uh, it endo? I- where does it? God damn it! Where does it end? Son of a bitch! I should have said that. Fuck! <laughs> I'm ending the call for a different reason. I'm going to go kill myself now. Nah. Uh-uh. Uh, so that's gonna be fun. I'm trying to think. Uh, basically, I'm just gonna try to clear out all the missions I can, which I finally figure out like what the what are missions I haven't done or what are missions I have done before. Surprisingly, that somehow eluded me this entire time. Right. Mm. Oh, and uh, found out the problem why I was I was banned from Warframe for all about 13 days, I think. Yeah. Honestly, I support them. And banning me? <laughs> I thought that was the right move. <laughs> You're a problem player. So. I am. I, you know me. I just like to go in there and hack the stuff and upload to the mainframe mm-hmm. and say racist stuff on the internet all the time. You know me. Especially in Warframe. So, yeah. you know, I'm glad they finally, you know, they gave you a little... Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, like, you try to be politically correct and stuff on Twitter. You try to cup, clean, put up a clean image. But, you know, I just want to say some bad words on the internet sometimes. So I go to Warframe and, you know, what the fuck? I can't say, you know, this and that and that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially that. Yeah. Especially yeah. that. Those are but actually banned this. words. This, that, or that. Yeah. Go <laughs> ahead. Continue twice. with your story. <laughs> Um, oh, so basically it was like when my computer got like, uh, I guess malware or something and people were trying to, I think it came from the humble bundle thing when it got leaked. Cause like when that got announced, like my Netflix was suddenly reactivated. I'm like, no. And (laughs) then like, that was the only thing I heard about it. Like basically try to access my Netflix. So I just basically changed all the passwords on everything, but Apparently affected my Warframe thing too, but that's oh. it's all all water under the bridge. It's updated everything. Oh, no, that's good. no free, no free Netflix for anybody. So uh, stay tuned for that next week. Um, Warframe, not my be being hacked. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, oh yeah, the Resident Evil Two remake demo, which is called Resident Evil Two, which is going to be confusing. It's kind of like God of War, but now it's Resident Evil Two. I mean, I think they said it's a working title, so we'll see, but hopefully it's a... I bet you the real title is going to be Resident Evil 2 2019. <laughs> Probably like God of War 2018, yeah. yeah. Resident Evil 2. 2. See? Yeah. It's, perfect. it's a perfect fit. Yeah, uh, that works. With that demo, what the fuck? <laughs> the whole thing is just what the fuck. Because the way it is... You your account, whatever you uh, download on Xbox, PS4, PC, Steam, whatever you download it on, you have 30 minutes of total gameplay with the demo. And once that's up, you can't play the demo anymore. Oh. Yeah. So which usually just leads to people making multiple accounts and trying to play as much as they can. But I don't really care enough to do that. So I just play it the one time. You should have recorded it then. He did. He streamed it. Oh, you streamed, streamed it. it. Oh, I, I yeah. totally forgot that that was a thing. Yeah, okay. He, th- he forgot uh, streaming was a thing for... Yeah, Twitch. Yeah. What What are we even, like, doing right now? <laughs> this is, what is this platform I'm on? Oh, God, I thought it was on Mixer. Oh, geez. 
Um, so the the game was cool. Uh, the gameplay wasn't very smooth. Uh, moving the moving Leon around wasn't super smooth. Um, the aiming wasn't. I'm not good at aiming to begin with, so you know, take this part with a grain of salt. But it's kind of hard to do headshots on zombies, and also sometimes they're not dead. It's very confusing. Mm-hmm. Like in order to make sure like they're super dead, you have like their head has to be gone. Because, like, I shot a zombie, like, in the head, like, four or five times once. That's the one thing I have, like, I really dislike the Resident Evil series is that, like, they're just like, yeah, you can just shoot this motherfucker in the head, like, a hundred times, and it's fine. Mm. But it's like, like all our heads are made out of concrete for some yeah, reason. Like, yeah, like, it's just it's stupid. I don't like that. Yeah, they're a little bit better with that with uh, Resident Evil 4, I think, is when they were trying to, like, kind of make that halfway realistic, but then... No, because then they had a freaking parasite thing pop out. I was out about, I was about to say, but then like after that, like halfway through the game, they get fucking tentacles swinging around and cutting your head off or whatever. So, yeah, I just learned the best strategy is just to shoot them in the knees and just try to run away from them. Mm. Um, uh, what else I was gonna say? Uh, what they did with the remake is kind of interesting. They kind of changed some of like the key points so far. Or like a character that basically like allowed you into the building mm-hmm. and just he's like, Hey, I got bit. I'm gonna go behind this door and die now. Goodbye. Is now like a central hub character for at least probably the first part of the game. Is he still dying? Yeah, he's still dying. Yeah, he's got like oh, a yeah. huge he's like pale white. <laughs> he's that guy that you meet up with where he's like leaned up against like a locker or some shit, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Marvin, I think. Yeah, Marvin's his name. He uh he plays a, a bigger role in this, I guess. I don't know. He probably is going to die like after the first half hour. But um, um, what else is cool about that? Oh, the way you take damage is kind of cool. Like the zombies actually like bite you, and you can actually like see damage. Uh, like what they do with like the graphics and stuff is amazing, which is part of the reason why I'm confused why a zombie has like four giant bullet holes in its head. And it goes down to die. You think it's dead, but then you walk by it. It's just like, oh, surprise. I'm going to bite your ankle. Like, no, stop. St- get, no, get off. Stop it. Don't. Stop. Head. <laughs> stop. Um, and then. Um, oh, no, yeah, it was OK. It's very it's very confusing. I, I wish there was more time to play with it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what their goal is with making a only 30 minute gameplay video. I understand, like, if you just had a gameplay demo. Um, that had basically about 30 minutes of content in it. I'd be mm-hmm. fine with that. Or you could like play the game repeatedly for only 30 minutes at a time too. That's also fine, but not like, okay, one, one shot. shot. Here you go. Good yeah. luck. Like, what the fuck? I, like I barely beat it. Like I beat it with like three minutes to spare because I was, you know, trying to explore stuff and check stuff out like a fucking idiot. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and, uh, oh, well, 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 I feel like, the positive for them in doing that is potentially so that when reviewers play it, they don't get a chance to go through and like try to take it apart. Although they could just record their playthrough. Um, but you know, yeah, basically to that way, they, you know, people get one chance through and then like, they can't have, I don't know, dude, Capcom is weird to, uh, yeah, apparently. Uh, yeah. They do some weird shit. I was going to ask, mm-hmm. uh, because I didn't get to see any of the play in the gameplay. So it, is is it first person like the no, other No, it's ones? third person. Is is, is it third it's, person like Resident Evil 2 or is it third person like over the shoulder third person? It's third person in the aspect that it's like Resident Evil 6 but it has Resident Evil 7's inventory system instead okay. of Resident Evil 6's stuff. So you oh, still have like the you have like the inventory slots and but they have like the same style from Resident Evil 7. So um what else I was going to say? Oh yeah, and the demo. There's this this part where you find a guy underneath a, a uh, one of those gates or whatever, uh, shutters or whatever. Yeah, shutter gates. I guess is what you would call them. Yeah, or like they go down and whatever. Yeah, Anyways, the yeah, the, yeah. What I was talking about. Anyway, it's like you find a guy there. He's like, oh god, let me in. You're like, okay. You try to lift it up. You pull him through, and then he gets stuck halfway through because, like, his upper half explodes with blood. Oh. From his lower half being chewed on by something, who knows? And then all Leon says, like he's just still trying to like pull him like half hearted. He's like, "Hang in there," 
And then you pull him out, and like his entire lower half is gone. And he's just like, oh no, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Like, why, why were you even there to begin with? You were useless. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh darn! Know. Whoopsie. Yeah, that, sucks. Uh, that was really weird. I don't know. It's just like I think it's just because like the way he said it was like so weird. It's like, hang in there. It's like, what, what else is he? What? 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 Go back uh, home, Leon. <laughs> I was thinking about what you were saying uh, with you know taking four shots to the head. You know, is 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 mm. seems excessive. Um, I wonder if because when you play the original Resident Evil two. Uh, you you can kind of aim, but most of the time you end up just kind of shooting, like you're aiming just for the zombie itself. You're not always mm-hmm. aiming for a particular part, depending on the gun. Um, yeah. I, I know there's, a, there's an exception with a shotgun. You can angle it up and shoot directly into the head. Uh, well, I think you do that with the pistol too, but most of the time you're just aiming and shooting like directly at them. So I yeah. wonder if maybe that there is, you know, n- not taking into account the previous Resident Evil games that had the same problem, Maybe there is some merit with them trying to replicate the same type of uh, effectiveness of the guns to, to uh, make as a more... homage. Yeah, as a homage. That's stupid. I was about to say, I'm like, sacrifice I, I was... gameplay for some asinine reason, and then put it in every other Resident Evil. Okay. Yeah, game. I was just spoilers. Not that you're stupid. I'm saying their decision is stupid. Oh yeah, yeah. Just in general. if it is a homage, it's stupid. Yeah. If it's not, because mm-hmm. they're the still stupid. I'm gonna be real upset <laughs> if the game comes out and the shotgun doesn't blow the fucking zombies' heads off in one shot like it does in the original game. You used to be able to hit even more than one zombie that way. Yeah, um, and that was always cool. You're like angle up, kablam, you're fucking dead. <laughs> Gonzo's, but yeah, and I was kind of thinking that too. If they're trying to like basically put the Resident Evil 2 difficulty into a modern game. But which it's kind of stupid because then it gives like zombies super armor. Yeah, and that's because, dumb. Yeah, the an original, easier way to do that is just to give you less bullets. I mean, that yeah. would have been because I, I had plenty of bullets. In, they already do that in Resident Evil too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's like half the problem. Anyways, like, oh god, they only have like so many bullets, and like you, you have a whole entire game to get through like the like this finite amount of resources. Right. So like half the time you're just trying to avoid zombies. You're not trying to kill them. You're saving your yeah. bullets for. Uh, bosses and whatnot so that's why i always just try to after after like the first two zombies that did that with I'm like there's no point in trying to kill them i'm just gonna shoot them in a knee and just run yeah which is um, kind of what you end up doing in the original resident evil 2 anyways you do a lot of running past zombies yeah but um i don't know i, I think everybody should check it out and see what you think of it but uh i mean it's it's weird so far so we'll see how it goes i hope it's good i really do yeah it'd be... I'm, I'm extremely hopeful too because i really liked the original so yeah but um, that's it for me for this week. What have you two been up to? to... Uh, well, you 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 missed mentioning one important. Well, well, we'll get uh, we'll we'll talk about it when uh, we get to the day. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So 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 Monday, <coughs> uh, Matt and I, uh, and uh, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, was it Coulter? Uh, no, D was able to play yeah, with D. us then. Yeah, uh, we we're, we're playing Civilization Five again. Mm-hmm. Um, still a great time. Um, I did have. Uh, some issues. Uh, I basically I didn't put as much work as I would have liked to in solidifying my hold as being uh, a top religion in the world, mm-hmm. and uh, we're getting hit by all sides by uh, all the other religions, and it's getting a little crazy. Uh, and we're on the cusp. Basically, next time we're probably going to go to war with like everybody. <laughs> uh, although I am trying to make friends with Austria a little bit. But and there's this whole here's this whole other thing that's happening where like Matt was was originally like the leader of uh the the World Council, but then he got he got like voted out by England, even though England's like the weakest country, but somehow they have the most like cultural, you know, whatever to be the mm-hmm. uh, the, 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 the top dog. And and, mm. and now there's all these things like uh, they're trying to embargo me yeah, they're constantly. Trying to, they're trying to embargo they're Japan. literally choosing yeah. world like laws to fuck me. Yeah, to fuck Jesus. specifically. Yeah, and it, it's what'd you do? Like, I think I didn't do nothing to him. Well, Matt is an uh, autocracy. You know, with, I'm Japan. <laughs> we just doing Japan shit. You know, <laughs> they tried to ban. Uh, whaling, they tried to ban whaling, which is like another thing that you know, Matt was depending on. <laughs> Um, I made the mistake of of, of suggesting uh, banning the uh, the city states the the city states from being able to trade with them because I didn't realize that anybody else was trading with them because I, I I know that D wasn't trading with them I wasn't trading with them 
Matt had mentioned how he wasn't f- allies with any of the city states, so I took that meaning that he wasn't doing anything for the city states. Turns out, no, Matt was actually trading with the city states, and it was an important part of his economy. And so when I suggested uh, that, but didn't vote for it, other people voted for it and got it through. And now, and, and Matt got fucked by that too a little bit. Although I think you're back into like an okay space. Yeah, I'm back. I'm uh, back, baby. Um, so th- I'm <laughs> taking the shit to the fight to England. Matt so, two uh, remake. So we're probably gonna do that again on on uh, well, tomorrow. No, we're not. Are we not doing that tomorrow? No, because D's out of town. Right? Yeah. We're, we're, yeah, we're doing a different game tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, um, on Tuesday we played Mutant Year Zero, fun game, yeah. good times. Um, afterwards we played with Coulter and we did uh, Left 4 Dead Two. Mm-hmm. Also fun game, great times. Yeah. Um, now that's a game that gets zombies right. Yeah. One hundred percent. That's a game that I think has the best gamified zombies out of any zombie game. Mm. You know, they come at you in hordes. They're not really that powerful. Um, and then you can just like, it makes you feel cool to shoot these things and and, sh- and the headshots kill them. Yeah. What mm-hmm. a fucking, you know, revelation that is. Someone should yeah. tell Capcom. And what's great about it too is even if you do end up dying because you get overwhelmed, I've never felt mad, like like upset at like the game necessarily. It's always just been like, yeah. well, I messed up, which is what you want, right? Um, and there are so many other zombie games, so it's just like it's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So we played that. Like honestly, like I want to play it again. <laughs> it, it was a lot of fun. Um, I also downloaded a mod to make all of us anime girls. Yeah. You, yeah, you, you downloaded the uh, Neptunia mod, so we're all like characters oh. from Neptunia. Yeah, uh, I don't know who the fuck they are. Yeah, if I remember, right, Neptunia is about like basically anime girls or video game consoles. Yeah, sick. I was just wanted to get something obnoxious. I made. Uh, unfortunately, mm-hmm. you don't get to see it unless you have the same mod downloaded or whatever. Yeah, um, if you're playing, and so I have, uh, from my perspective, all I had was uh, Coulter as Snorlax. So Snorlax was running around hitting things with hatchets and shit. And then mm-hmm. Coulter had himself as Snorlax and his, and then also made Matt like this, <laughs> this like obnoxious anime big titted <laughs> character. It was great. Um, Classic. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was good. It was good times. Um we we played Tales of Vesperia yeah. on Thursday. Oh yeah. On Thursday. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a great game. Mm-hmm. Matt's playing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, the uh, the combat system the combat weird. is really clunky, and I was reading that a lot of people were like, "Yeah, it's like uh, it's pretty clunky." Although it it's does clunky oh, yeah. through the whole game. Yeah, hopefully the, uh, the the combat gets a little bit better because we just got to the point where uh, basically you learn new combat techniques through the weapons that you have. So you have a weapon with that technique, and then you use it for a while. It's very similar to like Berserk. It did a couple of things too, but I think it's it more depends on it in this game. Mm-hmm. And so Matt has a weapon that allows him to to backstep. And so like oh, he, Matt was literally like kind of whining about it. Is uh, Vesperia a new Tales game, or is it just a, a re-release, re-release, of re-release of an older game? Of an okay, older I thought game. it was older. Yeah, yeah. It so that's probably why it's clunky. Yeah, it originally came out in, t- in two thousand eight, and it was a, it's a re-release. It's the definitive edition. Uh, uh, what's weird about it is that they didn't get Troy Baker back for the voices. Oh yeah. So yeah, like there's this weird shit where the they released Tales of Vesperia in Japan and um, the U.S. or whatever, and mm-hmm. they're like the same. And then they released the definitive edition on in Japan only. So it has like uh, story stuff and all that shit, and that never made uh, it to the West. What the f- so. Now the PC version and the new re-release has all that extra stuff, but they didn't bother to get Troy Baker back to do the voices or like some of the other people yeah. for the mm-hmm. voices. So you can totally tell when we thought they were just different takes yeah. uh, of voice acting, but no, they're two different voice actors. And sometimes they'll oh. be like, Troy Baker, he'll say something, so-and-so, and then new guy, and the take sounds totally different. Yeah, you can absolutely so they- tell. They didn't even bother to get like one voice actor for the entire thing. They have mixed voice actors doing different lines of two. dialogue for this. Yeah, basically just to cover uh, okay. all the dialogue and and extra stuff that was added in that in wasn't the Japanese released. Version, yeah. yeah, that wasn't released t- to the West until now. And it, it's crazy. Like you hear Troy Baker, he sounds good. Everything sounds mm. like it's mixed in with the environment and stuff like that. And then you get this other guy who we thought was, like Matt said, a different take. Yeah, we mm. thought it was Troy Baker, just a different take. Like but it, it yeah. Li- yeah, it. 
it literally sounds like he he uh, it, whoever it was that that did it like the EQ is all wrong like it, it's it sounds like there's no low end in his voice and almost like he did it over a phone type sound it has a little air in it so it's especially noticeable mm. and it's just oh, like oh okay that's different that's terrible so i can't wait <laughs> to look bad. forward to more of that yeah nah. um <laughs> jesus we know it's like immediately yeah it's like wait what the fuck <laughs> well yeah you guys are um, sound phobes so or what uh, is it sound one, files <laughs> audio files um yeah whatever uh, <laughs> nerd a funny thing about that that stream actually uh yesterday mm-hmm. i was uh, i was just kind of glancing at, w- at what we had and uh, on, on that stream, it said audio muted. And I was like, wait, what the hell? So I went into it, and none of the audio is muted for Vesperia or the game we're about to talk to, uh, to t- talk about in a second, uh, except for six minutes, uh, like, just in a random part of Vesperia because of a song that is actually, it's just one of the songs that's on the soundtrack. It's song number mm. seven. And uh, the song's playing in the minutes before they decided to mute. And I think, if I remember right, I think the music even changes, uh, but they just muted that whole part anyways. Uh, and it's this entire, like, it's kind of an important scene. It's like a transition where you're leaving the main town, you're go- you're opening to the open world. It's that whole thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah. great. So we just lost six minutes. Of, I mean, it's not as bad as the whole thing being muted, but it was just like, okay. Look at you, fable. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay. and before we played Vesperia that day, though, we had mm-hmm. a, a little friendly competition. Uh, second annual Second annual, and it's funny that you mentioned second because I am the two-time champion <laughs> mm-hmm. you of are. getting over it. Yeah, by Two ten feet. Yeah, time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by, well, last time got even further, but this yeah, time literally oh, yeah. was by like two rocks. <laughs> yeah, it was by yeah. two rocks this time. Mm. And uh, you know, we well had a good go of it. It was pretty close. Um, uh, it wasn't close. And then in the last 10 minutes, it became really close. It became really close. Mm. Uh, everyone participated to their fullest extent, except for uh, uh, a certain uh, player. Yeah, uh, from Rogue Rage Gaming, Coulter. Uh, yeah, Coulter. Mm. He Coulter. Uh, he kind of just, uh, well, he gave up like halfway through. Yeah. We did it for He never an hour, got over it. Mm-hmm. And he never he got over it. get over it, no. Well, he got over it in a different way. He, he just, got over it. Well, there's the a difference end. between just stopping and getting over something, you know? Mm-hmm. He didn't get over because if he were getting over, he would, you know, do it to his fullest extent and then be like, oh, I lost fair and square. I'm over it. No, he just stopped. Yeah. He's a, he literally he's a switched games secretly. Yeah. Because he's a quitter. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm really going through my head on because the way our, this particular, and we should do this more, uh, maybe in the future with a different game that's also hard. Uh, yeah. But uh, the people who win get to make the uh, a, a banner for the losers that they mm-hmm. need to then display for the whole next week of streaming. Um, and I'm really racking my brain on like what exactly I wanted to say on Colder's banner mm-hmm. uh, without it being too mean. <laughs> but like, mm-hmm. like oh, no. the I gave better. up or, you know, I, 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 I bitched out or, you know, like, like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just trying to come up with like, yeah, uh, uh, and and Matt and I will, I'm sure, come up with a, with a great idea later on. Mm-hmm. We already got yours all figured out. Yeah, well, this cake. ideal oh, cool. wise. Yeah, so oh, you, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Um, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Can't wait. But yeah, two time champ. Uh, let's mm-hmm. go. And that's what we done Thursday. Yeah. Casually, I've been playing Catherine. That game is fucking hard. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and I've been playing Mario and Rabbits, Battle Kingdom. So is it fun? Yeah, I like it. It is extremely dumbed down. XCOM. XCOM, yeah. Um, And they they do a lot of interesting things with mechanics and stuff like that that XCOM doesn't do. Um, But the I've gotten a perfect on every single battle and boss battle except for one. Wow. Um, Wow. And that was I I just been destroying it. Like there was like a uh, to get a perfect on the like the third mini boss or whatever, you have to beat it in twelve turns and have everybody live. I beat that bitch in four turns. Wow. Yeah. I'm You're the XCOM very legend. Good. Very good. I think definitely uh, Nintendo is really good at taking at, at at simplifying mechanics and then adding fun things. At, yeah, adding fun things to uh, uh, games, and so like, yeah. that, that totally makes sense to me. Mm. Um, that it's uh seems to be a lot of fun. Is the game obnoxious? Mm, 
Not like, are the rep? I mean, not really. You can okay. trust Matt because he gets uh, annoyed, you know? like. Oh, I know. That's why so, I asked. Yeah. He's yeah. a good litmus test. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a... Uh, they don't they don't overdo jokes, right? Like, mm. um, so anytime a rabbit is being stupid, you're just like, that makes sense. They're rabbits. Yeah. They're stupid. <laughs> but, yeah. like, the bit doesn't go on for longer than it needs to. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay. That's well, I might pick it up eventually. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it was on sale for twenty nine dollars, all the DLC and everything like that. So I was like, I wanted to play oh. that anyways. There you go. But and then, boom. And then of course you played uh, Thronebreaker with uh, Colter. Yeah. Colter on Friday, a shortened stream. Everyone was a little tired. Mm. Um, is that everything we played? I mean, besides uh, Ultimate yesterday and Melee today, uh, you had a bit a bit of a better day in Ultimate yesterday. Uh, I think maybe uh, it comes down to you were kind of focusing on learning like a new character and stuff like that. Yeah, learning Peach. Because yeah. um, she's the official top tier character by Leffen, right? But no, I was seeing her combos and stuff like that. But that's also true. Yeah, okay. I had Leffen put her put her at <laughs> the top of the tier list. But um, I mean, you played it her was in mostly melee her too. her combos. Yeah, I played her in Smash Four and I played her in Melee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I knew you liked her. All right, dude. <laughs> All right. Okay. Not a, All right. I don't know, dude. War. A uh, Sorry. argument can be made. Uh, who do you play in melee, Matt? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, is it Falco, oh, Fox, true. and Peach? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, he's got. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hashtag conspiracy. <laughs> no, but I. I mean, I. I'm like at least I, I'm hopeful now because you were having such a hard time with the game before, as far as just being, uh, you know, like less than Enjoying enthused it. with with with, <laughs> with 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 how the overall game runs, and so maybe if. Getting better at Peach will allow that to yeah, be a little bit easier. Yeah, you know, I, I'm you know I'm trying to, to get tilted. Yeah, that's basic. Like in melee, I don't have to worry about getting tilted. I don't get mm. tilted. Smash Ultimate, I have to like all the time. It's like it's like Denovu. I'm just sending checks like to the <laughs> server. You tilted? Nah, I ain't tilted. You tilted yet? Oh, I ain't tilted. Oh, but I'm getting there. Yeah, <laughs> I think just uh, wait. you have a big problem with. Uh, you know, like the big difference for you is like, it w- was what happened to my fault or was it out of my hands? Yeah. And I think that's a big It's thing. a lot. Of, I'm, you know, it's easy to be, um, to, it's easy for me to be like, yeah, that was my bad and not get tilted. Yeah. But then if the game is fucking me, uh, this is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also destroyed Spencer today oh, in, yeah. in uh, Around the World. Around the World Iron Man, Man, where we played all the characters. Yeah. So uh, we've done three oh. of these. Uh, the first one, uh, I made it about halfway. Uh, the second one, I made it a little bit further than halfway. And this one, we did a little bit different. We started from like an alternate like corner in, in mm-hmm. the character list, and we played all the characters with SD Remix on, which is. Like just kind of like uh, yeah, rebalancing. So certain thing. characters, uh, they've like they've modded how they work to make them easier. They like changed Buffed Gandalf's and stuff. Uh, up tilt from his kick thing where he holds the leg up to now just like a a sure you can kind of punch thing. You know they mm. just made a bunch of changes, and uh, I barely made it off the f- top row, and Matt went through everybody, and yeah. it was <laughs> it was tough. I was stuck on Yoshi for like six characters. Yeah. Oh Jesus really Christ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, that's pretty much it for us. Yeah, that's what we played. Go on to uh, let's uh, let's move on to our first uh, topic of the day. Uh, AGGQ 2019 just ended, and it was a pretty good week. Uh, oh yeah, you know I I I, I feel like satisfied, right? It, it wasn't like oh shit, everything was super crazy, right? I feel like I'm a little bit happier with this AGGQ than I was last year's AG, AGGQ. Mm-hmm. Um, just with overall like enjoyable sh- uh, runs. I mean, barring the fact that I think one of the ones that I enjoyed was kind of the same run. As like what was the highlight of last year, uh, Bloodborne? Mm-hmm. Um, but that uh, run was a train wreck. But the dude made it entertaining. Oh yeah, the, he so, almost wasn't able to complete it. Yeah, uh, the Bloodborne run this year, uh, like everything that could go wrong did go wrong. But he's mm-hmm. such a good like like runner and and uh, he's charismatic. Yeah, he's just super charismatic. Yeah. So in, in, in him something messed up, he would immediately like recover. Uh, uh, in like a, a he wouldn't way lose or, personal momentum. Right. Or he mm-hmm. wouldn't let the crowd die. Yeah, he would. Yeah, it, it, literally. And at some points, he creates this alternate reality where it's like, like, oh, I mean, obviously it wasn't on purpose that he died, but like, was it on purpose that he died? Was he doing that just to kind of, you know, you know, it's like, oh, you know, he does all these things. It, it, it it's a good run. Like, I highly recommend mm-hmm. watching the Bloodborne run. Mm-hmm. The Dark one, Souls was really good. Dark Souls three was a really good run. Um, mm-hmm. 
Um, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That uh, guy was, was a totally... Uh, that's the guy that was, like, really deadpan, right? Yeah. Yeah. He had a totally different personality. He was also kind of hilarious uh, at points. But he his commentary on, like, what he was doing and how he was going about it and, like, his thought process was really, really good. But he just he would just say it all, mm-hmm. and it was almost monotone, but not quite. Yeah. And then sometimes he would just <laughs> say a joke, and then he wouldn't, like, react to it. <laughs> but he would just, like, <laughs> let it sit. Um, yeah. Yeah, which, yeah. which made it his style of a commentary is also really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I really yeah, like yeah. commentary that is able to like a explain the story along with the game. Uh, two, um, and explain in a layman's term what the fuck is going on. Because a lot of yeah. times I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't know why I'm you're trying doing to do this. a. A pixel perfect, uh, no jump glitch shall allow me to go above here and then we'll uh, s- transfer into the side stage here and then we're going to use that. Nope, to, and we're done. You're like, and we're uh, time. What? <laughs> What'd you do? Well, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he did a good job. Uh, I, I think there's only one skip that he like had, had missed talking about. He just kind of did it. It's like, oh, by the way, yeah, that was a skip. Sorry. Yeah. And then they go back <laughs> yeah. and explain it or he went yeah. back and explain yeah. it. Yeah. And it was really Which cool. was cool. Um, so it, educational runs are good. Um, you know, and and also like like uh, an, another big sticking point I think for both of us is there are some runners who will purposely like talk shit about the game that they're playing, yeah, I and like that. make fun of it in a way, and it's just like a lot of a lot, lot, lot of runners maybe it's because of nerves, but they go a little too far with it, where it's just not enjoyable. They're like, oh yeah, this game's actually kind of bad and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know? or then they'll be like, oh, were they not? You know, they didn't know you could clip this, where they didn't even did they even do QA, they didn't do anything. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like you just hex coded the whole thing. They didn't know you were gonna do that, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those runners are would the play worst. the game normally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, you notice most of those runners don't end up coming back. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. Um, I was just saying, like I saw a few actually this year too, and uh, the Castlevania three one's pretty good because the guy's just uh, like it's super quick, and uh, they're playing like on the second quest, which is basically you play through the first quest again, except for enemies do a lot more damage. And, like, the couch was, like, uh, it was kind of weird because, like, this one guy was just freaking out every five seconds. Like, oh, don't do that. Oh, my heart. Oh, don't do that. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. But the guy that was actually playing was trying to, like, keep it keep it cool to, like, a fault where he, like, he actually accidentally, like, died and, like, had to, you know, uh, play for another extra two minutes. Mm-hmm. Even though he could have gotten, like, some health. He's like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go back for the meat. Like, oh, what are you doing, man? Oh, that's crazy. And then he died. He's like, eh. Whatever. Whoops. But <laughs> um, so that's Castlevania three, and then Area of Sorrow, uh, which is like the Game Boy one, I watched Game Boy that. Advance one. Yeah, it was really cool because like they would explain what they were doing, and then they had like extra time by the end of it that they actually went back and did some glitches where basically they like uh, phased out the main character for like the ending cutscene, and then he was like back into like the final area of the stage again, but you still couldn't see him. There's like a text box with like whatever girl that was talking to you still in the background. That's you could funny. like replay the whole area again. It was like, oh, that's fun. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, th- and then um, there's a Time Splitters 2 one, which was a co op. It was like a co op any percentage thing. And it was, it was kind of okay. Uh, it was just, you know, with these speed run streams, there's always like, a, just like, there's always like a baseline level of cringe. Yeah. And then it just kind of fluctuates. This one was like, it was just like random all over the place. And then halfway through they got to this like one, one stage, uh, both runners just walked up and left the, the room without saying anything to anybody. So the couch, like even the couch didn't know what was going on. Um, they're like, uh, so I guess you got time for donations or something. They're like, oh, okay. And so they're just kind of fumbling for like, I think like four, like between like three to five minutes or something like that. Holy shit. That's long. Yeah. Well, what happened, like I know it's on the screen that like finally somebody came into view and that's when they came in. So I think they were just waiting for that person to show up and they couldn't do anything to make them show up quicker. But like when they came back, they're like, so you want to explain what you did there? Like, Nope. I'm like, okay. What the fuck? <laughs> so they had a bit and then did the bit didn't tell anybody about the bit and then didn't explain the bit afterwards and just continued. Yeah, no, no. They're uh, like, <laughs> great okay. Joke. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I've, I've nobody some, got it. Yeah. yeah, I've seen some pretty good bits where like they they do things like uh, costume changes, 
Mm -hmm. or uh yeah there was one where they were doing like a racing game that was all neon so like everybody on the couch and stuff like that came out wearing like special light up you know stuff like like that people have done cool things yeah (laughs) i'm gonna be honest that one was kind of weird this agdq (laughs) there's like i honestly there's all the runs i watch and i watch a lot it wasn't really that much cringe like it was probably the lowest amount of cringe out of any agdq wow that's good ever well, they've I mean, been refining it for years now, so now that's they they kind of can smooth it down a little bit. Yeah, but, but yeah. uh, a- AGDQ was great. Any other notable runs that you watched before we move on? They raised two point three million dollars. Mm, yeah, I saw was that. that a record breaking one? Or yeah, I think so. So this has uh, so far been the most. Yeah, by I think a hundred thousand because uh, AGDQ last year had two point two. Oh wow! Yeah, nice. Yeah, they raise a lot of money pretty quickly. Um, no, not really anything particular. I just love all the random crowd jokes. People, apparently Orb was a thing this year. Yeah. People were shouting Orb a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it came from the Castlevania thing, because there's a lot of Castlevania games that have Orbs, and they just, they they said it during then, but I don't know if that's where it started. Yeah, I, What's the I, mystery I, of the Orb? Yeah, I don't know. I it's a conspiracy. That it started, uh, they had a really good, <laughs> awful game done quick, uh, like, part oh yeah that whole block yeah i forgot yeah, about that and uh there was a game in that where there's actually orbs or something like that mm-hmm. and they were doing it during that and so i thought maybe it originated from there but the crowd started it so maybe it came from something else yeah i don't know it doesn't matter know. it's weird yeah yeah but um, <laughs> that's it yeah, anybody who hasn't watched it definitely check it out there's a bunch of really good runs there's like a really good Mega Man uh race that happened there was a really good uh right, Final Fantasy nine super mario sunshine race that oh happened. yeah did you see the clip of him going through the menu no, we haven't got there yet. Yeah, we haven't got there yet. So we're still watching. We're actually oh. like watching through the whole Final Fantasy IX thing. Oh, uh, well, you'll know. You'll know what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, that was like a, a, an incentive. incentive yeah. So yeah, we're yeah, expecting okay. it, but apparently it's really, it's like really crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> when I told Eve, she's like, "Oh, so did he like mess it up?" Like, no, he got everything perfectly. She's like, "What?" I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy. Sorry, go ahead. We have so much uh, yeah. to talk about. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, have a, we actually have a lot to talk about. We're not going to get through everything. Uh, n- next story of the day, uh, Bungie and Activision. So Bungie is now uh, has, has decided to leave Activision. Um, I don't know. Is, is is it effective like immediately? Or... I think it is effective immediately. And they are they are also taking their rights to Destiny, Destiny with them. Yeah. Uh, this article says it best. Uh, Bungie takes back its Destiny and departs from Activision. <laughs> So it says, uh, we enjoyed a successful eight-year run. We'd like to thank Activision for the partnership. And what's so weird is that when Destiny signed, or not Destiny, Bungie signed on with uh, Activision Blizzard, they're like, Mm -hmm. yeah, we got a 10-year plan. 10-year plan for Destiny. 10-year plan. Mm -hmm. 10-year plan. Yep. Yeah. Eight years later, they're like, we're changing the plan. Yeah. Our games are kind of shitty. Yeah, they literally said the deal was briefly stated $500 million uh, for four games over 10 years. Uh, which sounds reasonable on its face, but they only came out with two games in that 10-year, in yeah. the eight-year time. Destiny 1, Destiny 2. And that's it. So I guess uh, the, the this guy's talking about how apparently there's a lot of pressure from Activision um, about about meeting deadlines rather than pursue, you know, it's ready when it's ready philosophy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, it makes sense. I'm yeah. hopeful that Bungie can kind of, like, come back in quality because it really seems like both Destiny 1 and 2, when they were released, they were just so feature incomplete. Mm-hmm. And it's like you know that no game developer wants that to be the case, and they're aware, like painfully, of the lack of things. Yeah, you know, there's no way you couldn't be. I mean, us playing De- Destiny for 30 minutes, you can tell. Yeah, you know. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, Bungie. You no, know, third time's the charm. Maybe Destiny yeah. Three will be the best one ever. And I'm like, hey, we finally got to do what we wanted to do. Oh God, I thank mean, God. <laughs> I'm not hopeful. Right. A lot of the mm. people who made the Halo games and the developers and stuff like that left Bungie. Um, well, yeah, a while back. A while back. Yeah. Um, Maybe mm. they'll come back now that they've decided to go on their own again. I don't think. Nice. I don't so. know what the reasons were for them leaving. So, well, they, well, the reason why they split from Microsoft or whatever is because they wanted to not make sci-fi shooters anymore. <laughs> um. And then Destiny. And then all of the new blood that came in when they, you know, grew and shit like that. All those people played Halo. So they're like, we want to make a sci-fi shooter. And the, <laughs> the Bungie like, people who, who mattered were like, <laughs> bye. Nah. <laughs> we done I'm that. Good. And Activision was like, that's a great idea. And they're like, oh, fuck. Okay. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. But you know, they're they're still a company. They're still out there to make money. True. You know. Well, yeah. Like, um, so you know, a lot of people are like, well, they probably push the microtransactions and stuff like that, and into they force Bungie's hand. I mean, yeah. I don't think I don't, I don't think they don't forced their that. hand, but I think maybe they probably had practices that. Bungie probably didn't agree with because I mean you know like with Call of Duty and whatnot that's always a microtransaction fest and yeah I don't know we didn't really get to see Bungie in the micro the, the uh, uh, microtransaction era when they had all the good Halo developers and whatnot so it's hard mm-hmm. to kind of tell for sure but right. I'm sure we'll see soon enough yeah, it's one of those where you can't know you probably shouldn't assume right mm. I mean Bungie is 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 this you know a company that made this great game back in the day these great games back in the day. And then yeah. now they've made some kind of uh, you know, so so it's easy to to blame Activision for any of the mistakes. Yeah, when yeah. You know, the, the changing thing here is like, oh, we had to blame the you know what yeah. happened. Oh, they signed with Activision. Must be Activision's mm. fault. Right. The definitely. Only thing that you can definitely say uh, w- w- was a factor was what they said was a factor, which was the the pushing deadlines and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. But beyond that, is really not good just to assume. Um, because it's probably not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't so we'll know. see. Like, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not. You know, I'm like 25 percent hopeful. Right. Yeah. I mean, it would be great if new, if if they came out with a great game in the future. Which, if there are any new listeners, that's actually the highest amount of hope Matt has ever had in his entire life. So this is true. It's a new yeah. personal record. That's his cap. <laughs> mm-hmm. <So. laughs> I mean, I don't know what type of hope can you even quantify the amount of hope you have for Kingdom Hearts Three. Is it more worry than hope? No, I think that's going to be a great game. Even if it's bad, I'll love it. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> there are some things that I just love, right? Yeah, well, yeah, no. Like, yeah, we all do. No matter how bad, it's like Blink-182, my favorite band of all time. Mm-hmm. They could they could release some of the worst shit ever. And I'd be like, uh, you find a way to love it. I, it's still the guys. Yeah. It's still my boys. <laughs> um, uh, next topic, Dota 2 Auto Chest. So, Fiska, you, you brought this one up. Um, you want to tell us about the Dota 2 Auto Chest? Yeah, apparently it's a mod for Dota 2. Who would have thunk it? Anyways, <laughs> basically they made Dota 2 uh, auto chess, which um, from what I can understand, you uh, it's kind of like a drafting game mostly. Like you have 30 seconds to buy heroes to combine them because when you combine them, they make them stronger. And I think to also place them, or you can place them on a certain amount. I don't know, like I briefly read through this, and it sounds really interesting, but because of the fact that, like, apparently it has a, over 100,000 concurrent players, and it's which is a lot like a custom game. for... Guys, is this yeah, a new eSport? Yeah, well, maybe. Who knows? Wow. But it's like, it's a free game that's got over 100,000 users. It has it doesn't have Fortnite numbers, you know, but, you know. <laughs> but uh, it seems really... Yeah, it seems really interesting. I might try it out for a little bit just to see what it's all about. But, um, because I, I try to play Dota 2. Uh, could not get into it whatsoever. It's like, oh, right. it's like more neither. complex league. Great. Yeah. I didn't yeah. I didn't want this. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting to check it out. So go check out Dota 2 Auto Chess. It's free. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it has that kind of appeal where it's like you draft, it's a limited amount of time, and it's mm-hmm. auto chess. So I'm assuming you put the you put the people down and then you watch the outcome. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, so kind of all the strategy is picking and placing. Well, and the reads, and the yeah, reads. yeah. So counter drafting, all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, so I I can definitely see how that's popular because on the face of it, it seems pretty like one of those games that you just want to keep going. You know? Oh, it's, yeah, it's kind of cool because it's kind of like poker where um, you kind of have to pay attention what they pick because uh, if they pull a certain character out, you can't use them in your combos for certain other characters and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So you have to like pay attention to what they're doing as long. As well with what you're doing too, so mm, that's cool. Uh, yeah, there's some strategy. Yeah, cool. So yeah, Dota Two Auto Chess. Um, uh, Fiskate, why don't you tell us about the Gearbox lawsuits as much as you can? Yeah, it's, I'll try to TLDR this. Basically, um, uh, what's his name? Calendar. Yeah. So, uh, what is it? Former, yeah, former Gearbox General Counsel Wade Calendar and Sandy or Sandy. I read CEO and Randy at the same time. Whoops. Oh, right. Uh, Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford have uh, been filing lawsuits against each other. 
uh, each accusing the other of various forms of fraudulent behavior. Um, Gearbox's thing against Calendar is uh, they accuse them of taking out six-figure loans from the company and not repaying them. And Calendar's filing against Gearbox and claiming that they promised remuneration for his services was never actually paid and that Pitchford forced him out of the company once he started to make noise about it. Which, that whole thing. So the Gearbox against Calendar is uh, uh, Calendar has borrowed money against the company and has not paid for it, uh, has not paid them back for it or has not um, done that. And Calendar suing against them for basically, because he's, if I remember right, he was like a lawyer. I, I we yeah, just read, we he, were talking about yeah, this earlier. Yeah, he was a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was so, a lawyer. So he was a lawyer that was working for his friend Randy Pitchford because they came, they like they grew up together and stuff. But he didn't sign anything. This is all like in like in good faith kind of things oh. going on. Like, hey, if you do in this, kind. yeah, yeah, if you do this, we'll uh, give you this. Blah blah blah. So. That's weird to begin with, and it's just a lot of com- complicated bull bull stuff, bullshit. Um, but you're if you're t- if you're listening to this, you're probably wondering: Does Randy Pitchford have underage porn on his USB drive? Uh, allegedly, the answer is no, um, because the, the what the what happened with the whole USB thing is that he left Brandy left it behind at a medieval medieval times restaurant place. Some fantastic kid. place, by the way. We've been there. Yeah, I've Good never food. been there. I have to check it out sometime. It's actually pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. Good food. Um, so yeah, so he left it there accidentally. Uh, some worker there picked it up, found company secrets, uh, uh, plans for future games and whatnot, and he found one one porn video, uh, of, of a cam girl, and the girl's handle is only eighteen. Um, uh, and he, and, uh, basically he found all that and then he, he talked to a uh, gearbox and like, Hey, yeah, bring that back and we'll give you a free swag and stuff. He was like, okay. Uh, so he did that Extortion. and I guess, yeah. And, uh, Pitchford was on a business trip and when he came back, he's like, I think the entire office looked at it and there's one piece of content on here and it never occurred to any of them that the reason why there was just the single porno was because of the magic trick, not because of. I don't know what the fuck they thought. A direct quote from Randy Pitchford, that is, yeah. by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. So he had it because the girl was doing a magic trick. Yeah, and apparently he likes to dis, like uh, disassemble and figure out magic tricks, according to him. So his like, so basically his thing is like, it's not underage porn. It's barely legal porn. Which is technically there is a huge there is a huge difference between well, see, that, the but thing, it's a very yeah, slippery slope. Look, look, yeah. the thing about the porn yeah. industry, and I have mm-hmm. years of research, mm-hmm. is that years. there's two ages. There's mm-hmm. teens, and then there's like milfs. There is no look at this hot twenty five year old, young adult. <laughs> yeah, right. There's none of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so and, she could be way older than eighteen. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and if she was on a campsite, it's not his fault. Yeah, and I, I'm not defending it. Right. I am defending yeah. it, but I'm just saying, if you're on a campsite and you're whatever, you know, you have to verify with the campsite that you're over 18 and that you're of age. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he's totally covered in, in, in that aspect. I mm. mean, if he was just looking at, you know, barely legal porn, like that's like 98 percent of all porn. Yeah, is well, is incest. <laughs> fucking yeah like stepbrother uh, shit yeah and stepbrother and, hey sis what's going on what are you, you know, do, what are you doing bro and barely legal teens yeah and yeah. teens and milfs that's all there is as far as the eyes can see i think my whole thing with this is i think it would be i think it'd be less weird if he was just watching the porn for the porn right like just own up to <laughs> yeah. it like yeah. even if he was really like watching it for the magic trick which is just like a my wife caught me. I need to say yeah, something. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. You just be like, yeah, I'm a fucking dude. Like I just yeah. watch him porn. My I bad. thought this chick was hot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But yeah, you just own up to it. So so how does that how does the before we move on to the next topic because we 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 have limited time, uh, mm-hmm. how does the, the USB drive uh like play into any of this? Well, uh along with other things, calendar was trying to um uh, uh, sue uh, Gearbox for he also mentioned that for uh, uh, what was it basically that he was also involved in shady business practices and along with like shady 
uh, uh, shady stuff in general. So he was basically just trying to, uh, you know, damage his character. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he said uh, he claims that Pitchford had a personal collection of underage pornography on a USB drive he misplaced in 2014, for instance, and that he siphoned Gearbox profits to pay for peacock parties in which adult men have reportedly exposed themselves to minors to the amusement of Randy Pitchford. That's along. That's what Calendar is saying along with uh, other stuff. So that's why yeah, that man. whole thing, that's why that was a thing to begin with at right. all. So I mean, there's just a lot of allegations so far, but no. Yeah. I mean, Pitchford is, he's not like a good dude though. He's like oh, kind yeah, of a no. shitty motherfucker. Yeah. I feel like both of them are both not great dudes. Well, no. No, I but probably like, not. No. <laughs> like, but you who's... know, I'm not going to be like, yeah, that probably happened. He probably does that. But even besides that, he's just besides that. If this is all fake, he's still a shitty dude. Yeah, yeah. He went no after no Jim Sterling. It was so hilarious. I didn't. I guess I never saw that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny. It's like, I'll check it out. Dude's, a, you know, president of a multi-million dollar company. Gives mm. a shit about what one YouTuber says. Which yeah, is exactly. For that YouTuber's uh, views. Mm. <laughs> huh, Game yes. presidents hate me. Find out why. <laughs> yeah, so that's happening. Uh, it's a whole big thing. They're suing, counter-suing, a lot of money involved, a lot of potential uh, defamation happening on both sides. Um, and that's the, current state of, yeah, uh, that's the current state of Gearbox. So if you're ever wondering why they haven't been coming out with games recently. Yeah. <laughs> or good ones, really. Or good ones. That's yeah. probably why. <laughs> kind well, of no, they, they have Borderlands 2 VR out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly what you just did. Shrug. <laughs> now tens of people can play it on their VR system. Yeah. Thank God. Uh what did we want to prioritize here? Or did we just want to do the questions or what do we want to do? Because we have um, three minutes. I say we mention the alien thing and then mention the epic thing and move on to the questions. Because those are two quick ones that don't require yeah. us going into detail. Um, where's my alien thing? Oh god. So um uh, starting with the alien thing. Yeah, so all that the teasing for the uh, new Alien game that uh, they were doing it turns out to be a Diablo Immortal ripoff. Is that what it is? No, oh, it's just it's another goddamn. shitty mobile tie-in game. It's just another game. mobile game. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, th- I thought you were that right. apparently has no uh, what is it linked to? Uh, what's a fucking isolation? Isolation. Yeah, it's Alien Blackout, and apparent and and yeah, it's gonna be a mobile game. And as no link to isolation, even though it like references like a character that was in isolation. You know, at least they didn't close a, you know, mm. their con with it. You know what I mean? Right. Alien con. They didn't close. They with just it. tweeted about it a bunch. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And then the quote here says like Alien Black is a standalone game that shares Amanda Ripley as a main character, but is not related to or a sequel of Isolation. That's kind of weird. Because okay. a lot of people were <laughs> like, "Is this going to be a sequel?" Yeah. Because nah. I'm mean, pretty cool. Yeah, because people like isolation and stuff. So they're like, oh, sweet. They're bringing it back. And they're like, it's a mobile game. And that's as much uh, as we know at the moment. Yeah, like, I don't know what the game's going to be. Are you just going to like... I think it's a horror game. Oh, no. A horror mobile game. How do you... They're, <gasps> <laughs> they're begging um, fans on their Twitter. Like, dear alien fans, there's still more to come. Dot, dot, dot. Very don't soon. Hate us. They're like, wait, just don't. Don't burn us, please. I just don't. fucking wish China would fuck off in general, but stop buying so many mobile games because that's where they're doing it. They're doing it because there's a huge market in China. Yeah, for, for yeah. developing mobile games. And, and shit. Mm-hmm. Fucking China. I mean, you know. It, so China's the problem. They're you it. gotta destroy China. Like, they're anything but slouches, right? They find. They can. It, continue to find ways of of exploiting uh uh the games market for for cash right i mean there there was a whole thing tens year, like like 10 years ago or and and moving forward with the the world of warcraft gold mining stuff and you know now the mobile game market because mobile games are exceedingly easier and easier to make so mm-hmm. well only, they're just extremely popular yeah and there's like formulas that you can do and they make money i'm just saying like yeah. what like what the fuck? Stop it. Mm-hmm. You're ruining it for the rest of us. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. Um, you it, know, it's not their fault. <laughs> I'm sorry, China. 
<laughs> I didn't mean to. I'm I'm just frustrated. You know, I'm you know, just, it's not you. I'm just I'm just disappointed in the situation. <laughs> <sighs> okay. uh, so our last uh I guess main story of the day, uh the Epic Game Store now has a refund policy matching Steam's. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it didn't take them 10 years to do it. Right. Two weeks from purchase and less than two hours played, get your money back for any reason. They well, just, they ripped that off wholesale, didn't they? Yep. Mm. So the news came this morning on Twitter, and uh, both the two-week time frame and two-hour trial period are features of Valve's return policy, which implemented in June 2015. It's already been that long. Mm-hmm. Um and so uh, it says further down the Twitter thread in which yeah, he knows this, uh, Galleon Kim uh, said that uh, the Epic Game Store will one day add user reviews. However, developers will have to opt in to having reviews of their products on the storefront. Plus, we want to have a solution against review bombing, he added. Honestly, makes sense. Yeah. Like, uh, at first I was like, uh, you could keep out reviews and stuff like that from your thing. But, like, review bombing is a major issue. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, now Steam does it where they they do it by time right like they'll be like this is you know this something something happened obviously yeah. and then they'll show you the graph of like what occurred so then you can see the previous like um if, if their reviews previously before they fucked up or but then like the china's current... mad and they yeah <laughs> review bombed because that's happened mm. <laughs> yeah uh yeah and and i definitely think that the steam system is actually getting better and better uh because then they'll just like they'll have like okay but this is like their current standing yeah mm-hmm. which is important and i feel like it, it it does the job pretty well but yeah the store uh launched in uh launched in december yeah and they already have the review thing which is nice mm. but uh yeah so that's that's happening that's good that's good news i mean it's always good when a when a store uh you know does what you want when, what should you know. be on release anyways but yeah. uh, i'm yeah. glad that they've done it at all so well, I think the part of the thing is they can't be a competitor to Steam if they have Steam's shittier, older practices, you know. So it's not like we have yet to see if they are a, a good store or a bad store. They're just like, well, we can't fuck them over this way yet, so let's, we'll just uh, do something well, else. They're using but. all that Fortnite money to buy exclusive you know, yeah, games exactly. for their store. <laughs> yeah, uh, Division 2 is going, it's skipping Steam entirely and going straight to Epic Game Store. So, mm. Mm. Which is fucking retarded because <laughs> you still have to open up and play. <laughs> Oh wait! You have to go through. Epic you Store. still have to go through UPlay. So they you should... might as well just buy it on UPlay. That's hilarious. Yeah, I it's mean, it's every game. Ubisoft does games. You you have to go through UPlay. So, which I guess is a smart marketing decision on their part, but still hilarious. Mm. All right. Well, Steam's probably like we don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, we just okay. hit thirty thousand games. A lot oh, of them are anime hentai games, but that doesn't matter. We still get cents on the dollar for each Mm -hmm. one sold. (laughs) It still adds up. Right, yeah. Um, But yeah, that does it for our our main topics of the day. Uh, Fiskit, you said that there were a series of questions for us. Well, we have a few. We don't have to answer all of them this time. Um, You want to do like either the middle one or the last one? uh, Yeah, I was hoping for the last one. Okay. Yeah, okay. We can do the last one then. That's fine. Um, Yeah. You go ahead, because I had to think of one. I didn't really get a chance to think of one right. yet. but So our question of the cast, all right, uh, is what's the best bad ending? So mm. uh, this has to do with, you know, games that first, of course, have the option of having multiple ending, endings in the first place. And I guess in, in our opinion, what game has the best ha- evil ending? Has the best yeah. evil or bad ending. Yeah. Um, and I actually did some thinking on this, and I think I, I have I have two ideas, um, but I, I really like how Dishonored does their bad ending, uh, where the game slowly shows signs of it as you move forward, and uh, everything becomes more and more dilapidated. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also like the way that Bioshock 2 did their bad ending. Bioshock 2? Yeah. I don't remember the ending uh, of that. That's the ending where the sister... Uh, like kills you and then like, you know, goes all super evil at the end. Oh yeah, yeah, I kind of remember, remember that. I, I did the good ending, but I remember like looking. I that never up played that not. ending, but I remember hearing about it. And I thought it was really really cool. Mm. Yeah, better than uh. Did one have a weird, or did one have various endings, or yeah, was it, it just yours? You had like oh, a, okay. where you killed a, a couple little sisters. 
You had one mm-hmm. where you killed none, and then where you killed all of them. Yeah, and in Bioshock yeah. 2, it has to do with not killing the little sisters, but, like, uh, doing things that, like, influence them negatively or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something the like exact, that. The exact yeah, I think I remember. Um, I don't know. I think mine would probably be... Probably Jade Empire, I think, has a really good bad right. ending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, makes you feel like a badass. And you're yeah. just fucking evil. Like oh, you go yeah. closed <laughs> palm in that, or closed fist, like, you're a monster. Yeah, there's no gray area in Jade Empire. It's either you are the, the saint of saints, or you are That's literally true, Hitler. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, I try to you discuss, had... have a civil conversation about your favorite game. And you guys shit on me when I'm trying I to didn't throw say, you a fucking I bone. I didn't say shit. I'm out I of just here. said, you, Whatever. that's not true. Whatever. I what are you talk about names. your fucking game? I don't there give a extremes, shit anymore. Though. They are <laughs> extremes. Yeah, there are extremes. Um, but yeah, I think that ending is really good. And then I think the Fable 1 ending, if you're bad, is decent. Where you kill your sister for the sword. Spoilers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, you just like slit her fucking throat. Yeah. Fable 2, let's not talk about the ending. Just, let's just not even talk about is that ending. ending? <laughs> um, it's, just, it's a bad ending in a different way. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> what else? What other? I used uh, to do a lot of bad endings when I was right, younger, yeah, but uh, I haven't done any. I had a hard yeah, time. I can't remember first. any off the top of my head, um, except for like the most recent one that we actually all experienced, which was Call of Cthulhu. No, oh, but that was not even a good one, though. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Like, it well, like, like the bad ending was the ending. best ending of the game. That's when true. you actually got saw Cthulhu. <laughs> it was like, oh shit, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> When you just give your heart to Cthulhu. Those, those four frames of Cthulhu were like, yeah, yeah. let's go. Yeah that, yeah, that was actually a really cool shot. And that was yeah. the only, like, enjoyable thing, about, thing that about that game. Yeah, um, yeah I, I had a hard time even thinking of games oh. that had go evil endings. Go ahead. Um, in Golden Sun, you have a choice to, like, uh, the guy's like, hey, all right, the world's in danger. Uh, you just take this guy and go, with on, go on this quest. And you'd, like, and then you have, like, yes or no. And if you select like no three times, the game just ends. And like, and so the world was ruined. Everything's <laughs> dead. That's, uh, that's Isaac hilarious. retired peacefully or something like that. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> those, those are always fun. Like to have like endings, like just like Little have Easter absolute choice. Yeah. <laughs> just like, oh, okay. Game yeah, over. Uh, what was it like? Far Cry 4? Or... Far Cry 3 does that. Yeah. Or no, Far Cry 4 does that where if you just chill at the place. If you don't even oh, start the game and yeah. just refuse to move forward, like they'll you just the dude comes back and then you just spread mm-hmm. your mom's ashes and you leave. Yeah. Like what you <laughs> like probably like what, a normal ass person would yeah, do. Exactly. Like you, you you go there and do what you came to do and yeah. that's it. Um but So uh, you really don't have one fist cake? Well, um so I'm I'm thinking through like uh there's a just a series of games that have potential bad endings. You have like uh Dragon Age I think there's some, yeah. some bad endings. There's a Mass Effect series has um, a couple of scenarios where there's potential bad endings. I never played uh, fully through those, and so I, I haven't really experienced like a Renegade run. Yeah, I, and, and, and I whether mean, or not that's satisfying. All, but like, I hear that the Femship Renegade run is really yeah, good. You were talking about that before, yeah. Um, so I'm just throwing these out there just to see if uh, this case that that reminds you of anything. I'm um, looking through a list of games that I, I have. Uh, I can t- like Dragon's Dogma real quick. The bad ending is you uh, um, living. That's interesting. So the yeah, like it has a whole weird bullshit at the end of the game, which goes into like it's a weird cycle. Bull- it's like it's a weird cycle thing. But basically, like the bad ending is like, but I don't want to die. And they're like, okay, whatever, Satan, just go <laughs> ahead and live your life. All this giant hole sucks the world in. Like, okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> fuck. Um, trying to look through some more here. Do, 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 do. Cause I mean, these games that are on the, my Steam list. There's probably nothing that I have played in in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll try and like jog my memory at all. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I think really that's probably a about it i will hold on I'm on the s's uh no 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 
such engaging. Yep, no, okay. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I just like I really <laughs> yeah, didn't yeah, think no of worries. anything. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm I'd missing like... quite a few. There's a lot of games that I just haven't played that I know have like some really cool choices. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, usually I only play a game like once. It's it's hard for me to be evil. And then anyways. like I don't want to be evil on my first time around. Yeah. Yeah. I think like the old one of the old Mortal Kombat games has like one of the best ending or bad endings because like you play it like with old fighter games is like whatever character you play as once the tournament or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think like one you play as like some evil guy and then they're like, well, yeah, but even though you won, fuck you. And they kick you off a cliff. And we're like, no. And that's like <laughs> the actual ending of the game. It's like, oh, okay. That's hilarious. That's, that's yeah. pretty good. But that's cool. all I have. Cool. All right. Well, uh, in that case, let's go ahead and move on to uh, uh, our, our information. Uh, Fiske, why don't you tell people where they can find you and what you're doing? Well, you can find me on the old www.twitch.tv slash Fiskcake where I play video games sometimes. This week I will be playing uh, Warframe. Uh, Tuesday we'll be playing uh, Mutineer Zero with the NGTV boys over here. Uh, Mm -hmm. Thursday I will be playing something with Real Grade Gaming. I'm still not quite sure. I don't know what's going on with that. Um We'll figure it out. But uh, Wednesday and Friday for sure, uh, more frame. Uh, Tuesday after the Into the Veil, more Warframe. And then next week we'll be trying out Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And then the week after that, whatever game I pick, I'll be working on uh, uh, schedules. I'm kind of still debating if I want to do, uh, like, times specifically. Like, whatever we do in the evening, we'll, I'll do in the evening. That's fine. But mm-hmm. I'm debating on doing, like, Morning, afternoon streams versus evening streams, only because it seemed like I got a little bit more engagement with the the morning slash afternoon streams. But it's you know it's, there's a lot of things to figure out. But check that all at www at twitch.tv slash fistcake. YouTube this week we'll have more of the hex, um, another Twitch analysis video, and either tonight later on or tomorrow morning I'll be playing uh, Castlevania: Curse of Darkness and try to get some episodes of that out. And I think on the weekends, starting like next weekend, I'll start uploading my Twitch uh, VODs as kind of like a filler thing so people can watch the streams in case they haven't seen it before. So, yeah. Cool. And yeah, so uh, that's it for me. Where can people find you two? I'm also on Twitter, but whatever. Uh, yeah, Twitter at The Fist Cake, by the way. The oh, also, are you doing a Kenshi series? Um, <laughs> eventually. Um, I think I'm pretty much at the point where I can start working on it, but I want to at least finish uh, the hex and the curse of darkness before I start, before I uh, transition to something different. Right. Or yeah, it's special or something, but you know, that's, that's behind the, the scenes. Baseball what, you know, fuck that shit. Get out of here with that shit. Okay, sorry. Just interested. Don't be <laughs> never be interested in my life. Don't uh, try to engage with my friend. <laughs> How dare you for, um, uh, and your TV specific information. Uh, you can find us on YouTube and Twitch at Neanderthal Gaming TV. It's the same thing in both places. Um, this uh, week we will be streaming uh, on Monday. We might be doing some Minecraft, some Feed the Beast. Uh, we haven't played Minecraft in years, so it's now come it's come back around where it's like maybe we'll play again because it's last time we played we're like I'm super annoyed at this. Um, I was burnt the fuck out. Yeah, super burnt out. Um, and, uh, this is the same thing that happened with Terraria at first, but then like that burnout, like went away quicker and then burned out again, super quick again. Yeah. Cause when we played Terraria for the first time, we literally like, we binged it for, for like, like two days, two days. And we like downloaded like a bunch of stuff to like open up the whole map to us and oh, yeah, like, yeah. kind of really ruined it for ourselves. <laughs> I think I, I did the almost the exact same thing too. I'm like, oh, this is fun. I'm like, oh, cool. I can modify my inventory. Oh, sweet. I can check everything out. Oh, I can have all the items. Oh, great. I, yeah. I did that for like for a week. I'm like, okay, well, I'm over it. Now I'm done. I've <laughs> yeah. done everything. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, and then on Tuesday, of course, we'll be doing Mutant Year Zero. Uh, we'll probably play some Vesperia uh, this week as well as Melee and, and Smash Ultimate. Um, that'll be doing Thronebreaker on Friday, I'm sure. Um, and then on, on Twitter, you can check us out at NeanderthalGTV, which is, you know, uh, which, which by the way, uh, you, I'm not sure if it's Twitch or if it's YouTube. I think it's YouTube is 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 going to stop the automatic uh, yeah. tweets for games. Uh, so you have to do them all as custom like like announcements on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to fix that. I mean, Fiske, you were <laughs> ahead of the curve with that. You've been doing that forever. Um, 
But uh, moving on to constant complete sp- specific information, you can follow us on Twitter at ConComcast. That's where you can find information about the podcast and Into the Veil, which is our sister show that happens every Tuesday where we play weird and wacky games. Um, right now, of course, it's Mutant Year Zero Road to Eaton. Um, you can uh, send us ideas and suggestions and questions to constantcompletecast at gmail.com. The podcast does go live on twitch.tv slash concomcast. Oh, yeah. I forgot I had a poll on the Twitter. Let's check it out. Yeah. Uh, uh, you continue. Li- but later. Yeah. <laughs> we go live at, at 3 p.m. Pacific time on Sundays, um, both on concomcast and Anathal Gaming TV on Twitch. All episodes are available on YouTube. The audio-only version is available on your favorite podcasting app, and both are released on Mondays. And we did get that fixed, so uh, the audio uh, podcast feed is uh, slowly updating and catching up, and uh, it is good to go. All the way updated. Everything's okay. on there now. Yeah, so, they're all new episodes on every Monday and stuff and things and let's whatnot. Go. Yeah, yeah. We uh, should uh, we should put something in the Discord that way people know in case anybody who maybe is interested but doesn't want to watch us live or whatever can listen to it as a podcast. Oh, um, okay. Again, when, because, in the future when we have people in the Discord, gotcha. Hey, we we have people in the Discord. <laughs> all right. <laughs> anyway, so uh, you had a poll. What was that poll? Yeah, I'm trying to find. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'll I'll just continue to talk then. Uh, but yeah, oh, wait, uh, we stream this. on Sundays, and uh, both the video and audio version are released on Mondays. Um, and any uh, any future plans for uh, like like group stuff? Right now, we're doing Mutant Year Zero. We don't really know what game we're doing after that for Into the Veil. It's your game, yeah. Is it my game? I think uh, so. Uh, did I have a game that I chose or that I was? I, I seem because I did shitty Call of Cthulhu. Right. Mm. The run back. Piscake's doing Mutant Year Zero. Yeah. There was a mm-hmm. game that I was like interested in. And I think I've written down somewhere. But I think it's a horror game. Because I can't find this those tend to be dude. the weird and wacky games. Piscake somehow magically finds like these crazy uh uh f- Japanese games, so we're, we're grateful for that. Um we're currently trying to locate whatever poll Piscate was doing in Yeah, I don't know where the fuck it is. <laughs> What the fuck? Oh, God. Why is this so hard? Like, it's the most recent... It should be, like, one of the most recent tweets. Let's see. I don't any more. Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay, so we, I ran a poll about the Red Dead Redemption 2 spoiler cast, and I was asking other people's opinions about what they felt about the game. The choices are RDR2 was great, was okay, was not good, or is complicated. We had four votes, and the winning the winner was RTR, RDR2 was great, followed by RDR2 is complicated with one vote. So you, the people, have decided that RDR2 was great, and that's okay. You know, <laughs> that's all right. Um, <laughs> it's fine. This so, is upset about it. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Uh, you know, I just don't... It's, you know, don't it doesn't jive with you. You know, that's, that's totally okay. Yeah. You yeah. Know? That's fine. Sometimes some games just don't, you know, don't, don't perfectly match up. Um, if mm. you do, um, so if, if you want to check it out, we will be doing uh, continuing polls and, and, and things like that. So if you want to send in your opinion, uh, definitely mm. hit us up on Twitter at ConComCast for that. Um, thank you for the poll update, Fistcake. Uh, any last words about the podcast in general? No. Any other updates? I think we're good. No, yeah, I think, right. we're, I think we're good. Well, thanks everyone so much for watching and for and for checking us out and for listening and all the good stuff. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Oh, Bye.